Spaghetti is one of my first loves. I remember being called the Snow Queen for how much Parmesan cheese I'd stack on my pasta to eat it because I loved cheese and I loved pasta. Happily, my youngest quite often asks for buttered noodles with cheese, starting her love of pasta. In today's episode, I'll be sharing some recipes from one of my favorite cookbooks, Pasta from the Authentic Italian Kitchen. I'm going to get you started with one of the most basic spaghetti recipes, Spaghetti Aglio e Peperoncino, or Spaghetti with Garlic olive oil, and hot pepper. What you'll need is one pound of spaghetti, two cloves of garlic, a half a cup of olive oil, one dried hot red pepper or plenty of crushed red pepper, and a handful of finely chopped parsley. Start by cooking your spaghetti. While the spaghetti is cooking, put the garlic, oil, and pepper in a frying pan over medium heat. As soon as the garlic begins to turn golden, the sauce is ready. Pour it over the drained spaghetti, sprinkle with the parsley, and toss well. I'm Jess Faulkner, and you're listening to my podcast, Just Jess. Today's episode is called Spiritual Uprising and Spaghetti. I grew up in a religiously split home. My mom was one of Jehovah's Witnesses, while my dad identified as non-denominational, but Christian, so negative tension was always crazy high between my parents. My mom would take us to meetings with her, while my dad protested it the whole time. He didn't really offer an alternative, besides the occasional visit to my grandmother's church, which was Southern Baptist. My grandmother, on my dad's side, was very much against us being raised as Jehovah's Witnesses. She tried to take us to church and get us baptized as soon as possible. Spoiler alert, it never happened. I remember getting into trouble in second grade for telling my classmates that Santa wasn't real. See, I never grew up with that magical belief in Santa as Jehovah's Witnesses don't celebrate holidays. So while we knew of Santa and the lore around him, we never believed that he brought presents on his sleigh or crept down our chimney and left presents for us. This didn't seem odd to us as kids because it's what we knew. When I was little, I hated losing out on holidays simply because I just wanted to be a regular kid. Too bad I was a little weirdo. Time for some updates. I had a cardiac event on Tuesday. It sucked. I'm alright, it was my own fault, and that's all I want to say about it. My platelet count went up 100,000 points since my last appointment. The doctor said to give the Jackify some more time to be more effective, so that's the plan. I will say that I feel so much better on the Jackify than I did the hydroxyurea. On the hydroxyurea, I was just constantly tired. I just felt, I felt like I was dying. I was exhausted, I was weak, I was irritable, and it was just miserable. And the Jackify just changes that. It's a game changer. It's wonderful. I am beat ass tired, everyone. I've been getting up early with my puppy, like 3 a.m. early with my puppy, and it's really starting to wear on me. I might be due for vacation soon if I knew what was good for me. My mantis have not hatched, and I'm very bummed about it. 
I've been spraying the habitat a few times a day, keeping a warm light over the habitat. I have the egg hung up how it's supposed to be. Everything's in place for these mantis, so why won't they hatch? I'm ready for my mantis. My plants are doing well. Some of them are crying happy tears, meaning that the leaves are just wet. The leaves are just, you know, bleeding water. I haven't added any new ones because I don't have any room, but I did recently make more room for plants by clearing off some space in my office by the window. But I am not going to get any more plants as I already have so many living things to take care of right now. I have some really nice pieces propagating um, and I think those are about to ready to move to soil, but I don't think I'm going to buy any more plants because I have so many that I can propagate. My oldest broke her toe. We thought she broke her arm and her toe, but it was just her toe. This is why you don't run in the hallway. This is why you don't run in the hallway. It's it really bums me out. She's she's only six and she's already broken a bone and that sucks. She's in a boot and has crutches. She'll be okay. But like I said, it's her first break. She was in the ER for seven hours though. I may need to do a whole episode on the healthcare system and how broken it is. Seven hours for a broken toe with three people ahead of her is a bit too much. I haven't really done anything else on my bucket list yet. I want to do an open mic night, but I might practice by posting a song on here first and getting your opinion of the song. Maybe I'll do that. This next recipe is called Spaghetti al Pecorino, or Spaghetti with Pecorino Cheese. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, one cup of grated pecorino, one tablespoon of black pepper crushed with a mortar and pestle or freshly ground. You're going to cook the spaghetti and drain it. Sprinkle it with the cheese and pepper and a few tablespoons of the cooking water. Mix well and serve. As a preteen, I loved being a Jehovah's Witness. I think I loved belonging to something, and I honestly just wanted to do a good job as a servant to God. I also loved the fact that it meant I could spend more time with my mom. It drew us close together, and we were absolute best friends. I loved going door to door. Yep, I did that. I loved studying the Watchtower and reading The Awake. I was proud not to stand up for the pledge at school or to bring my Bible and read it when I was done with my work. Here are 15 core Jehovah's Witnesses' beliefs from JW.org. 1. God. We worship the one true and almighty God, the Creator, whose name is Jehovah. 2. The Bible. We recognize the Bible as God's inspired message to humans. We base our beliefs on all 66 of his books, which include both the Old Testament and the New Testament. While we accept the entire Bible, we are not fundamentalists. We recognize that parts of the Bible are written in figurative or symbolic language and are not to be understood literally. 3. Jesus We follow the teachings and examples of Jesus Christ and honor him as our Savior and as the Son of God. Thus, we are Christians. However, we have learned from the Bible that Jesus is not Almighty God, and that there is no spiritual basis for the Trinity doctrine. 4. The Kingdom of God This is a real government in heaven, not a condition in the hearts of Christians. 
It will replace human governments and accomplish God's purpose for the earth. It will take these actions soon, for Bible prophecy indicates that we are living in the last days. 5. Jesus is the king of God's kingdom in heaven. He began ruling in 1914. 6. Salvation. Deliverance from sin and death is possible through the ransom sacrifice of Jesus. To benefit from that sacrifice, people must not only exercise faith in Jesus, but also change their course of life and get baptized. A person's works prove that his faith is alive. However, salvation cannot be earned. It comes through the undeserved kindness of God. 7. Heaven Jehovah God, Jesus Christ, and the faithful angels reside in the spirit realm. A relatively small number of people, 144,000, will be resurrected to life in heaven to rule with Jesus in the kingdom. 8. Earth. God created the earth to be mankind's eternal home. 9. Death. People who die pass out of existence. They do not suffer in a fiery hell of torment. 10. God will bring billions back from death by means of a resurrection. However, those who refuse to learn God's ways after being raised to life will be destroyed forever with no hope of a resurrection. 11. Our Worship we do not worship or idolize the cross or any other images. 12. Our organization. We are organized into congregations, each of which is overseen by a body of elders. However, the elders do not form a clergy class, and they are unsalaried. We do not practice tithing, and no collections are ever taken at our meetings. All our activities are supported by anonymous donations. 13. Our unity. We are globally united in our beliefs. We also work hard to have no social, ethnic, racial, or class divisions. Our unity allows for personal choice, though. 14. Our conduct. We strive to show unselfish love in all our actions. We avoid practices that displease God, including the misuse of blood by taking blood transfusions. We are peaceful and do not participate in warfare. We respect the government where we live and obey its laws as long as these do not call on us to disobey God's laws. Last 15. Our relationship with others. Jesus commanded, You must love your neighbor as yourself. He also said that Christians are no part of the world, so we try to work what is good toward all. Yet we remain strictly neutral in political affairs and avoid affiliations with other religions. However, we respect the choices that others make in such matters. Here are some other facts about Jehovah's Witnesses. They do believe in going door to door to spread the good news of the kingdom so that everyone has a chance at everlasting life on earth. Of course, people think that they're a little odd because they don't celebrate holidays, they dress a certain way, and they aren't really known for their association with worldly people or things. What I do like about Jehovah's Witnesses is that they're very kind and accepting of people. They're generally the nicest people I have come across. Very misunderstood are Jehovah's Witnesses. I recently went with my mom on a Sunday to celebrate the Jehovah's Witnesses celebration of the Passover called Nice and Fourteenth. And everybody was so kind to me, even though I walked in there with face tattoos and piercings and I'm covered in tattoos. Everybody was very kind to me and very accepting of me. And that's more than I can say for some other Christian churches I have been to.
This next recipe is for spaghetti aglio e broccoletti, or spaghetti with broccoli. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, two pounds of broccoli florets, two cloves of garlic, and a fourth cup of olive oil, plus salt and pepper. First, you're gonna cook the broccoli in an uncovered pan of boiling salted water for about 10 minutes. When it is done, remove about half of it with a slotted spoon and keep it warm. Cook the spaghetti in the same pan with the remaining broccoli. Meanwhile, heat the olive oil in a frying pan on a low flame. Add the garlic and remove it when it begins to brown. Add the drained broccoli, turning it frequently. When the spaghetti is done, dress it with the sauce and freshly ground pepper. Add a chopped anchovy filet for an additional flavor. Myself, I am not a religious person. I am a spiritual person, but I don't think I believe in organized religion. I think whatever churches are doing, they're doing it wrong. I do feel connected with the earth, though. I feel very spiritual or in awe of creation when I'm out camping or see a beautiful sunset or think about how everything has to go so perfectly right every second for our living conditions to continue. Think about it. Just in regards to a human body, everything inside of you has to go so right for us to function. Even if your heart skips one beat, that could potentially be life-threatening. Our hair grows in just the way that it's on top of our head. Our organs function just so to make sure everything operates smoothly and we are able to walk erect while breathing, while thinking, while walking. It's all just so thought out. It's incredible. Like, I want to believe in something bigger than me, but I don't think I am a Christian because I don't believe in Christ. I believe that Christ was a man, but do I think he was the physical body of our creator, whether that be a god or multiple gods or whatever may be the smart thing that created life? Maybe nothing created life. Maybe we grew from the genus Homo species and developed from our distant relatives, Homo naledi. Homo is the Latin word for human or man, and sapiens is derived from a Latin word that means wise or astute. So maybe it is all evolution. I do believe in science. I do believe in what can be proven. I believe in facts. I guess I'm not sure what that would be called in the end. Maybe agnostic? An agnostic is a person who believes that nothing is known or can be known of the existence or nature of God or of anything beyond material phenomena. A person who claims neither faith nor disbelief in God. So yes, I consider myself to be agnostic, which is crazy to say because I always grew up in what I considered to be a Christian household. And besides those few months span when I was 19, I have always believed in God. I've always believed in the Bible and in Jesus. I think as I grew as a person and discovered myself a bit more since I've been married to Josh, which thank you husband for giving me a safe space to evolve, I started questioning more. Like, why does the Bible not have female writers? I'm sure the Christian God isn't sexist, but there are still places where women cannot spiritually lead. And I think that's bonkers. It's also really hard for me to believe that Christians are the only ones who got it right when that's really just a Western way of thinking. There are so many religions around the world. Do I believe that God would put everyone who is not a Christian to death? Nope. Honestly, what I truly want is for there to be a creator that loves us enough that everyone gets what they believe. If you believe in multiple gods and there are multiple levels of heaven, then there are. If you believe in reincarnation, then you'll be reincarnated. If you believe that evil people will burn in some type of hell, and you're an evil person, well, guess where you're going. There was a show or a movie where this happened. I enjoyed the concept of it. 
The truth is, I have no idea what I believe. This could all be from a big bang. This could be from a Christian God. I mean, we could be living under Zeus. You know what I mean? There could also be nothing. I've thought about that too. But when you start dying, I mean, really start dying since we're all dying anyways, then you begin to question all things. I can't tell you how many people I've asked about the afterlife. At this point, I just want to know opinions. I want to hear what everyone thinks. So far, I really like Charlie's answer of us just returning to stardust. That sounds magical to me. Ursula, my oldest, would like to believe in reincarnation. I could get behind that. Come back as a house pet or a turtle or something. I did take mythology in college and I really enjoyed it. Maybe I'll start believing in the Greek gods. Because how is Christianity so much less far-fetched than believing in Greek gods? Every religion believes that it's right. According to some estimates, there are over 4,000 religions, faith groups, and denominations that exist around the world today. Researchers and academics generally categorize the world's religion into five major groups. Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, and Judaism. In 2022, around 31.6% of the global population were identified as Christian. Around 25.8% of the global population identified as Muslims, followed by 15.1% of global population as Hindu. Christians believe that Jesus was the Messiah promised in the Old Testament. Christians believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and believe that God sent his Son to earth to save humanity from the consequences of its sins. They are followers of Christ's teachings. Christian churches are divided into a variety of denominations, each with their own specific ways of worshiping and teaching. However, all are united in the acknowledgement of the Lord Jesus Christ as God and Savior as witnessed to by the scripture and in the life of the church. Jesus was born in a manger in Bethlehem to Mary, a virgin at the time of conception and Joseph, her husband. Mary was visited by the angel Gabriel and told she would conceive a son and that he would be the Messiah. Jesus was crucified on a cross. His death made salvation and forgiveness of sins possible for all. On the third day after his crucifixion, Jesus arose from the dead. His resurrection is celebrated on Easter, which is considered Christianity's most important holiday. After Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection, God's presence remained on earth in the form of the Holy Spirit to be a comforter to all. Salvation can only be obtained by believing that Jesus was sent by God to forgive the sins of every human and to confess those sins to him. For this next recipe, I want to share the recipe for spaghetti alla carbonara, or spaghetti with pancetta and egg. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, two eggs and two egg yolks, one half cup of grated pecorino, one half cup of grated parmesan, one fourth pound slice of pancetta, olive oil, and salt and pepper. In a large bowl, beat the eggs and egg yolks with a fork. Add the grated cheeses, season with salt and pepper, and mix well. Cut the pancetta into three-fourths inch strips and cook slowly in three or four tablespoons of olive oil until they become slightly crispy. Add the drained spaghetti to the egg and cheese mixture and toss vigorously until the eggs begin to set. Pour the pancetta and oil over it, toss again, and serve. Islam is an Arabic word which literally means submitting. Islam is fundamentally an action, a way of living one's life before God. A Muslim is one who submits to God and aligns their life with what God has made plain. 
The follower of Islam, Muslims, believe in one God, Allah, and believe Muhammad was his prophet. They also believe in Adam of the Bible's Old Testament, that he was the first prophet. There are five pillars of Islam that Muslims follow. Muslims believe the Quran is the divine word or revelations on which they base their faith. There are 114 chapters in the Quran. Muslims are monotheistic and worship one all-knowing God, who in Arabic is known as Allah. Followers of Islam aim to live a life of complete submission to Allah. They believe that nothing can happen without Allah's permission, but humans have free will. Islam teaches that Allah's word was revealed to the prophet Muhammad through the angel Gabriel. Muslims believe several prophets were sent to teach Allah's law. They respect some of the same prophets as Jews and Christians, including Abraham, Moses, Noah, and Jesus. Muslims contend that Muhammad was the final prophet. Mosques are places where Muslims worship. Muslims also revere some materials found in the Judeo-Christian Bible. Followers worship Allah by praying and reciting the Quran. They believe there will be a day of judgment and life after death. This recipe is called Spaghetti alla Mozzarella or spaghetti with mozzarella. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, a fourth pound of butter, a half cup of grated parmesan, and one fourth pound of diced mozzarella. You're going to cook the spaghetti, drain it, and pour it into a bowl containing the butter. Sprinkle the parmesan over the spaghetti and mix well. Add the mozzarella. Put everything into a buttered round baking dish and place in a 350 degree oven just long enough to melt the mozzarella. Remove from the oven and serve right away. Buddhism is one of the world's largest religions and originated 2500 years ago in India. Buddhists believe that human life is one of suffering and that meditation, spiritual and physical labor, and good behavior are the ways to achieve enlightenment or nirvana. Buddhists do not believe in any kind of deity or god, although there are supernatural figures who can help or hinder people on the path towards enlightenment. Buddhists believe in a wheel of rebirth into different bodies. This is connected to karma, which refers to how a person's good or bad actions in the past or their past lives can impact them in the future. This recipe is called Spaghetti alla Rustico, or Spaghetti with Country Tomato Sauce. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, two cloves of garlic, a handful of parsley, a few basil leaves, one half cup of extra virgin olive oil, six ripe tomatoes seeded but not peeled, chopped into small pieces, grated parmesan, and salt and pepper. Make a fine trito. A trito is a finely chopped mixture, usually some combination of parsley, onions, garlic, anchovies, or capers. So you're going to make a fine trito with the garlic, parsley, and basil. Put the oil into a large frying pan and cook the trito over a low flame. Add the tomatoes, season with salt and pepper, and cook for about 10 minutes. Drain the spaghetti, add it to the sauce, and mix well. Keep the flame very low so that the spaghetti absorbs the flavors. Sprinkle with the Parmesan and serve immediately. A Hindu views the entire universe as gods and everything in the universe as God. 
Hindus believe that each person is intrinsically divine and the purpose of life is to seek and realize the divinity within all of us. The Hindu belief is totally non-exclusive and accepts all other faiths and religious paths. For this reason, it's sometimes referred to as a way of life or a family of religions, as opposed to a single organized religion. One fundamental principle of the religion is the idea that people's actions and thoughts directly determine their current life and future lives. Hindus strive to achieve dharma, which is a code of living that emphasizes good conduct and morality. Hindus revere all living creatures and consider the cow a sacred animal. Food is an important part for the Hindus. Most don't eat beef or pork, and many are vegetarians. This recipe is called Spaghetti alla Norma, or spaghetti with eggplant and tomato. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, one medium round eggplant, one clove of crushed garlic, one one-half pound of peeled, seeded, and chopped tomatoes, a few basil leaves coarsely chopped, plenty of grated ricotta salata, olive oil, salt, and pepper. First, you're going to wash the eggplant, but do not peel it. Cut it into very thin slices and place them on an inclined platter. Sprinkle with coarse salt and leave for an hour so that the bitter juices run off. Begin the sauce by cooking the clove of garlic and oil until it turns golden, then remove it. Add the tomatoes and stir with a wooden spoon. Season to taste with salt and pepper and cook for about 20 minutes over a medium flame. At the last moment, add the basil. Meanwhile, dry the eggplant slices and deep fry them in olive oil. When they are golden brown all over, drain them. Do not salt them, however, until ready to serve. Cook the spaghetti, drain well, and mix with the sauce and the ricotta salata. Pour the spaghetti into a serving bowl. Cover with a layer of fried eggplant, add salt, and sprinkle with more cheese. Religious expression of Judaism believe that God is one, has no form, created the world, is eternal, and is still actively involved in world affairs. Judaism is one of the world's oldest religions, dating back nearly 4,000 years, and is considered to be the original Abrahamic faith, which includes Islam and Christianity. As a monotheistic faith, followers of Judaism believe in one God who revealed himself through ancient prophets, including Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Solomon, and others. In addition to the number of sacred texts, the most important of which is the Torah, Jews believe that the Ten Commandments are holy laws handed down to Moses by God. Worldwide, there are about 14 million Jews today who worship in religious centers known as synagogues. Throughout their history, Jews have been subjected to persecution for their faith, including the death of about 6 million Jews during the Holocaust. The history of Judaism is essential to understanding the Jewish faith, which has a rich and influential heritage of law, culture, and tradition. Jewish people believe that there's only one God who has established a covenant or a special agreement with them. Their God communicates to believers through prophets and rewards good deeds while also punishing evil. Most Jews, with the exception of a few groups, believe that their Messiah hasn't yet come, but will one day. Jewish people worship in holy places known as synagogues, and their spiritual leaders are called rabbis. The six-pointed Star of David is the symbol of Judaism. Today, there are about 14 million Jews worldwide. Most of them live in the United States and Israel. Traditionally, a person is considered Jewish if his or her mother is Jewish. The origins of Jewish faith are explained throughout the Torah. 
According to the text, God first revealed himself to a Hebrew man named Abraham, who became known as the founder of Judaism. Jews believe that God made a special covenant with Abraham, and that he and his descendants were chosen people who would create a great nation. Abraham's son, Isaac, and his grandson, Jacob, also became central figures in ancient Jewish history. Jacob took the name Israel, and his children and future generations became known as Israelites. More than 1,000 years after Abraham, the prophet Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt after being enslaved for hundreds of years. According to scriptures, God revealed his laws, known as the Ten Commandments, to Moses at Mount Sinai. This recipe is called Spaghetti del Pescatore, or Spaghetti with Crayfish and Shellfish. You'll need one pound of spaghetti, a handful of parsley, one clove of garlic, four large basil leaves, one half sweet green pepper, two tomatoes peeled and seeded, one medium squid cut into pieces and quickly sauteed, one fourth pound of crayfish, four jumbo shrimp boiled and shelled, one fourth pound of small shrimp boiled and shelled, a large handful of small clams of any variety and mussels. Olive oil. Prepare a paste or a very fine trito with the parsley, garlic, basil, and green pepper. Put it into a saucepan with plenty of olive oil over a medium flame and season with a pinch of salt. As soon as the garlic begins to turn color, lower the flame and add the tomatoes, followed by the pieces of squid and all the crayfish and shrimp. After 10 minutes, add the clams and mussels. At the same time, begin cooking the spaghetti. When it is done, drain it and toss it directly into the saucepan with the sauce. Mix well and serve. I met a man this morning at 2 a.m. at Waffle House named George. He talked to me at great length about making the most out of every day and living true to me, living true to my joy. I think I'm gonna try that for the next few days, see where it gets me. Thanks for coming again and hearing me talk for a while. I really appreciate your support more than you know. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I love you. Just Jess is produced by Josh Faulkner. Information for this podcast was provided by the BBC, the National Geographic, and History.com.